Yay Networks. Welcome back to Jojo Mayhem. Welcome back. If I sound tired, if we sound tired, if we sound defeated, defeated. and broken mm-hmm. and humbled. That might be a bit of an exaggeration, but some bad things have happened to us this week. It has been a Jojo Mayhem of a week. This might be our worst week ever. Have we said that before? I feel like we just said that. I feel like this past month has been bad. It's been a, There's been a string of unfortunate incidents that we've had mm-hmm. to deal with. But this week definitely tops it. There is a hospital involved in this week. There is a potential surgery. Yeah. There is... So this know, was worse. There is potential jail. Yes. There's money being paid. <laughs> All right. Let's dive right into it because we have a lot to cover. <laughs> oh, man. Hannah, mm-hmm. you want to begin by explaining the mayhem that our week got off to the start with? Yes. So we had a nice lunch meeting our agents in person, just uh, two of them, in person for the first time. Yes. And we met one in New York City, and then we have some out here, and we just met them. Yes, we were having a lunch meeting yep. in West Hollywood. Uh-huh. Ish, I don't know. It was exact. West Hollywood. It was West Hollywood. <laughs> because I know the police department that we're about to interact with <laughs> <laughs> was the West Hollywood This next department. segment <laughs> is dedicated to you, LAPD. <laughs> We have some qualms. No, I think it was like <laughs> West Hollywood Parking Enforcement Department. So a fake organization. Yeah, those people. Anyway, <laughs> we had a lunch meeting, and if you're familiar with the West Hollywood area, there is nowhere to park. Yeah, it's a lot of like street parking, which in the car that we currently have, we cannot street park in West Hollywood specifically, like in any busy areas, because we have to park about three and a half feet like that's minimum, like three or four feet from the curb in order for our door to open for Shane to get out. And so when you're in like a very busy area, you cannot park four feet from the curb because cars will just hit you. You'll block the other lane. Like it's just a no-go. So street parking was not an option. Yeah. Thankfully, we knew that ahead of time. Oh, yeah. And we found some parking lots and decks nearby that we could use. So we're driving to lunch. Yep. We go to the very first parking lot. Yeah. That we had selected. We pull Which in. was the closest one. If we were going to go further away, it was going to be like a, a mile walk. And it was right. very chilly. In Prattahall. Yeah. And this is an aside here. But everywhere on earth has a severe lack of accessible parking spaces. Yeah. But in an environment like this, you know, downtown, West Hollywood, it's even worse. Yeah. Like, there were so few places that had accessible spots that we felt really lucky when we pulled into this first lot and there was there was one open one accessible parking there spot there were only, yeah there were only two accessible parking spots in this lot and one was taken but one was open and unfortunately for us it was the one that was on the wrong side of the like lane to let Shane's ramp out into my ramp only comes out one side of the van yeah and the other side was just like trees and so I had to back into the spot so that we could open Shane's ramp and it was kind of a tight lot yeah so like doing that maneuver it was like 20 spots was total kind of difficult yeah so I back into the spot and as Shane is getting out I see that on the sign for the accessible parking it says head in only like head in parking only. Like you can't back into the spot. And I was like, well, first of all, why? <laughs> like give me a good reason why, because that doesn't make any sense. And second of all, if we don't park this way, we are not going to lunch because like there is literally no other accessible parking spot for us to use. Like we just can't go to anywhere in West Hollywood then. So I was like, okay, I'm I'm leaving the car. Like Shane needs to get out. Right. Whatever. And if we had pulled in forward facing, there was a row of hedges <laughs> where my ramp would get out. Well, so like curb, that direction yeah. was not accessible. The blue lines were in the middle of these two accessible spots. Yeah. We had to back in in order to utilize the accessible nature <laughs> of the spot. Of the spot. Yeah. So I was like, I, you know, Hannah read me the sign and I was like, I mean, they'll never. Yeah. Like, like they, they can see the, We have a sign that says like this ramp opens eight feet out. Please do not block. Like you, it's a very clearly inaccessible vehicle. We have that sign. We have the placard yeah. that we had in the window. Like it's fine. Yeah. It's not a big deal. And also <laughs> the fact that we were backing in wasn't like harming anybody. No. 
Like I, it wasn't a law that made sense to me. And so I'm not going to follow a law that doesn't make sense to me because I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. No, it, there was no. Got to use your brain a little bit. No, like discernible reason. Yeah. Why we couldn't have backed in. So we backed so in. We did. And we went to lunch. It was a great time. Yep. I had a great lunch. Love meeting our agents. We walked back to the parking lot and you can probably <laughs> imagine where this is going to find a ticket and a fine on our window shield, mm -hmm. windshield. Yeah, windshield. Window shield. How much money do you think it was, Shane? Was it a five dollar? Was it a warning? Was it a hey, please don't back into this again? We know that we have nowhere else for you to park in this entire city. We know that this is but, asinine. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, here's a little heads up that you're not supposed to do this. Was it ten dollars? No. Was it twenty? No. Was it thirty? No. Was it forty? They really want to. Pour some salt in the wound. It was a $60 ticket. A $60 mm -hmm. parking ticket. For backing in. And for it said failure to obey sign. That was our that was our law. Which, that we to broke. be fair, is true. Yeah, we, we disobeyed didn't. the sign. Yes. But it was the only accessible parking spot yeah. in like a mile radius. Yeah. And we weren't about to park a mile away and walk 10 minutes. Yeah. But... Like, that's it's more not, than 10 minutes. It's not fair. Yeah. So. Well, also, we would have missed lunch. Let's not be like, it's not. Right. A no. mile is not a 10 minute walk for us in West Hollywood. It's just impractical. <laughs> Hannah goes into a spitting rage. <laughs> like, I was afraid to get into the car with Yeah. Her. I was like, this is actually the worst thing. I was already like, I was bracing for this. I was like, imagine if there's a ticket, Shane. <laughs> the audacity to ticket an accessible vehicle when you don't provide anywhere. Like. People that need to park there have nowhere else to go. Right. Like it is literally saying like if the one spot that works for the the ramp side of your van isn't available, you can just come back another day. You don't need to not be in this area. Yep. <laughs> so to ticket that, it's it, absurd. I am with no reason. Like, okay, if backing in put people in danger <laughs> in some way, yeah. I get that. It yeah. didn't. Like it did not I at don't see, all. Yeah. The like the the orientation of the lot like actually worked out really well for back again. Yeah, like it ended up being really easy to get out. To get out, of that. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was ridiculous. So while we're still sitting there, mm -hmm. Hannah's like, "Okay, I'm gonna file an appeal." Yep, because it says <sighs> if you'd like to appeal this ticket, you know, here's the link or pay it. So I take a photo of Shane in the wheelchair area. I write this whole thing about how there's nowhere else to park. She and drew a diagram. Yeah, I'm like, this is absurd. <laughs> anyway, I check like five days later, and uh, it is just, it just says, you cannot reappeal this. Denied. denied. Appeal denied. Appeal denied. No reasons given. Nope. Other than you failed to obey the sign. Yeah. So I, I uh, need a lawyer. I'm going to need, I, if I can't appeal the ticket, I pay the ticket. If I can't appeal the ticket, I would like to change the whole, the, <laughs> the law. Like, how can I get that sign removed is my question. We are considering <laughs> elevating this all the way to the Supreme Court <laughs> if we need to. That is the passion that I feel for this cause. If there were <laughs> hundreds of other accessible spots. Or five. Or, five, or two. <laughs> or one more. We would have pulled into it correctly and, you know, everything would have been fine. Yeah. There aren't. It's the fee that gets... It's like <laughs> the absurdity of the $60... That just feels like way too much for this specific situation. So if you are a lawyer in the L.A. area <laughs> and you would like to represent <laughs> us as we take down the city of Los Angeles for their ridiculous mm -hmm. parking rules and yeah. lack of accessible parking. And also, when I filled out the appeal, I selected video conference appeal. I oh, right. It was like email. Would you like an email resolution? Would you like a letter in the mail? Would you like a phone call? Would you like a video chat? And I said, video chat. And I said, look me in the <laughs> look eye. Look Shane in the eye and tell him <laughs> he can't park in West Hollywood. And we didn't get a call. So if you are West Hollywood parking, I would really like to have a word. Uh, if anyone knows anyone in West Hollywood parking, <laughs> if that is even the real, that might not even be the name of the no, it's something like that. body of government. But, Mm -hmm. If you know anyone in parking, <laughs> generally, in the parking biz, yeah. forward this to them. <laughs> I think the moral here is uh, we need more accessible parking spaces, yeah. especially 
in highly trafficked areas. Yeah. Where street parking is like the only real option for people. I would pay the $60 again to park that way though. <laughs> I'll do it again. I'm going to go back to West Hollywood. I'm going to park in that spot and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to hand the the parking <laughs> ticket or officer my 60 bucks. You know what? Don't even print the ticket. Here you go. And there you go. Have a good day. I'm going to so. park here the whole day. Uh, so frustrating. <sighs> and that was not even the worst part of our week. No, that was probably the highlight of our week. <laughs> <laughs> Got our blood pumping, and that was that was a high. Uh, all right, so let's take a trip break, and then we'll be back with some more Jump Yard Mayhem. Mm-hmm. I love cooking. I love cooking when it's easy. <laughs> with every plate, cooking is not only easy, but enjoyable and fun, right, Hannah? Yes, it is enjoyable and fun, Shane. I know you love cooking. <laughs> I am obsessed with Every Plate's new 15 minute or less slate of recipes. Mm. They obviously only take 15 minutes or less to prepare, and I can handle that. You're very good at 15 minute or less recipes. Thank you. Do you remember the pimento style grilled cheese? Yes, Jane. Oh. And that was where our interests converged. Oh. What's your interest? Pimento? Well, yeah, I, I love <laughs> pimento, but I'm just saying oftentimes you'll bring me a recipe that I'm like, mm, no, thank you. But pimento grilled cheese sandwiches, who wouldn't love that? That is in your real house. Yep. And making it together was easy and fun. Yep. Every plate is also America's best value meal kit. It's 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, so you can count on great value week after week. Plus, only pay for what you need with pre portioned ingredients. Every plate meals are 58% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. So in addition to being easy and fun to make, it's also helping us eat less takeout and save money. I always thought that meal delivery kits would be way more expensive than eating takeout, but with every plate, that is not at all the case. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code junkyard149. Again, get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code junkyard149. That's up to a $110 value. All right, back to the show. Okay, we are back. We are now driving home. From this parking ticket. We're bringing you right through our week. Yep. So that you should experience what we did. <laughs> why we are so tired right now. <laughs> We're driving home. We think this is the low of our day. And right? it's still in the rage. I'm angry. I'm making little kind of jokes to cheer her up, and all I'm getting is, mm. <laughs> mm. I'm still fuming. I'm mm. thinking about all the emails I want to write. I'm angry. We get home, okay? We open the door, and Chloe runs out. Which is very strange. Scuttles. She sc- <laughs> scurries. She scuttles out of the house. Head down, tail between her legs. Yeah, upset. That's not her normal. No. Greeting. Normally, she's like jumping at the door, like, "Oh my yeah, god, yeah, they're home. my parents." Yep. Nope. Nope. She scuttles away from us. Looks very guilt ridden. So I'm like, "Oh, did she shred a tissue? Yeah, like, what? Like, it, you know, what? She's is she- not a bad dog. So no. like, leaving her home alone has never been yeah. a problem." So we go inside, and as I walk through the door, I realize... You're walloped. I realize that she has had an accident. How? Yeah, but Hannah, mm-hmm. you realize because a physical... I didn't see it. A physical odor mm-hmm. smacked you in the face. I was hit by a smell. It hit me while I was still outside. <laughs> yes. I was literally like, oh. It's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, so I'm like, oh, no, she had diarrhea. And uh, we walk in. Chloe, this happened once to her before when she was like sick last year where she had diarrhea like in the middle of the night, uh, we, like didn't tell us, didn't like broke out of her crate and pooped in our kitchen. Didn't tell us. Didn't didn't come get us. <laughs> just like snuck around. And then we woke up the next morning. Right. That was like four years ago. Today. And that her, was like a once in the like. She was fine the next, like, yeah. later that day. Oh, we actually took her to the vet, and they were like, it's diarrhea. She's okay. Yeah, they were like, oh, you're, we know you're concerned. Yeah. Parents, <laughs> but she's fine. She's fine. And she was fine. Give her some time. Yeah, she was fine. So we walk in, and she has had diarrhea in the kitchen of the Airbnb. That's an understatement. It was like a murder scene. It was, 
It was like, it was a murder scene, but I do want to emphasize that she is a very clean and careful dog. <laughs> and she went in like the, the laundry room slash kitchen area where there was nothing yeah. to ruin. Like there was actually no, no issue. Like, she didn't go on a carpet or like on a bed. It was just the issue of that. Now Hannah had to mop up diarrhea yeah. mm-hmm. for an hour. An hour. It was awful. <sighs> So I cleaned up the diarrhea. Because it was sprayed. It was it was, a, <laughs> so it was a spray. It was liquid. And she, I like take her back outside. I'm like, do you need to go again? She goes again. And it's just like liquid, okay? There's nothing sorry to if it. You're so sorry. This is like pretty much the end of the, the descriptive part. Uh, so there's just liquid. And we're like, uh-oh. She obviously is still having an she issue. Has a tummy and ache. she threw up when she was outside. She like she threw up her breakfast. I'm like, oh no, she's sickly. But this has happened before. Like, she should be fine in 12 hours, 24 hours, whatever. And we didn't want to like be overreactive. Yeah. Because we were last time. Yeah. And And last time there was blood involved, and the vet was like, it's fine. Yeah. And she was fine. Like, so we were like, this is just diarrhea. She's okay. So we spend the rest of the night. She's like, you know, tired and upset. She's still having these symptoms. House smells lovely. <laughs> we we op- aired it out. We opened up every window that is yeah. in the home. So we go to bed that night. We're hoping that she is going to sleep through the night, wake up feeling better. That does not happen. She gets up four or five times throughout the night. We slept for like two hours. Basically, she came and got us each time. Yeah. So that Hannah was able to let her out. And have all that happen outside. <laughs> yeah, the first time it happened, we had moved her crate to right outside our door, and she came in. And then after that time, I brought the crate next to our bed. So yeah. every time she just like got up, we went outside. She was still having all these issues. Lovely night. <laughs> yeah, awful. The next morning, she woke up, and it was not better. And at that point, she didn't want to eat any food or drink. And we were like Googling the symptoms and everything says like, if they lose their appetite, you should bring them into the, to the hospital. And we felt so bad. She was just like lethargic a, a shell of herself. Yeah. Yeah. And all the things said, like if she seems her normal self, but she's having diarrhea, it's fine. This was not that. No, she was barely awake. Yeah. So we brought her into the hospital at like 2 PM. We found a, an urgent care, like hospital place that didn't have a long wait. It was a weekend. Yeah, or it was the weekend, and yes. so like regular vets weren't open, so yeah. we had to find a specialty. Well, vet. and regular <laughs> vets are usually like appointment. True, we had true. to go to like an emergency yeah. type thing. So we get there, and she is just like leaking uh, <sighs> feces, is what the vet referred to it as, which I thought was very proper. <laughs> we walk, <laughs> hold on, we walk into this vet, and we open the door, and one of the employees like squeals. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, I follow you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is immediately followed by Chloe shitting all over the floor. <laughs> she, Chloe was <sighs> like, she was being so good. She sat down while we were like, hi, like, you know, we're bringing our dog in. She stands up and there was just a puddle. <laughs> And the, the the nurse was like, oh, no, <laughs> that's not good. Uh. So we waited outside, and eventually they came and got her and brought her in for the for the vet to see her. And the vet came out and was like, I am extremely concerned about the odor <laughs> because it smells like her guts are rotting. She said her guts smell like they're rotting. Uh-huh. And we were like, is that, a, is that a diagnosis? Like, is this bad? And she was like, I just mean figuratively. Like, it just smells really bad. <laughs> we're like... Oh, okay. Like, yeah, we agree. It smells really bad. I was like, I'm a very nervous person right now. (laughs) Please don't use language like that. Don't use not casual casual language like that. (laughs) Um, so the vet was concerned about a blockage. So they did an X-ray on Chloe. Uh, that took about an hour. So we were just waiting outside. They also began giving her like anti nausea. Yeah, anti diarrhea medicine. Help her feel a little bit better. Yeah. So um they saw the X ray and it was kind of inconclusive. They were like, we see some mixed things in her gut, which is a little strange, but no one big thing where they're like, that's a blockage. Yeah, no obvious problem. No obvious problem. So they were like, our option like she's really sick at this point. So they were like, our options are we can open her up and just try to find a blockage because we do see some like weird things but we're not sure if that's it or not. Which when, you know, and this might be me being a naive dog owner, like this is my first dog yeah. ever, but like I did not expect surgery to be on the table yeah. immediately. Yeah. And that really freaked me out because I was like, oh, this is a much bigger deal than yeah. I realized. 
Yeah. So they were like, that's number one is we can open her up. Option number two was to transfer her to a 24 hour facility, like a, a real inpatient hospital, because this place closed around midnight. So they were like, if we do surgery, you're going to have to then transfer her to a real hospital anyway. So you could transfer her there. They can either do a surgery or they can do more, you know, specific testing. Yeah. And that sounded like very difficult, like moving our post surgery dog yeah. to a different hospital. It's just all. Yeah. It was a lot. It was very overwhelming. And they were like, option C is that we can just give her IV fluids and medicine and re-X-ray her in a few hours to see if anything is moving or if it does look blocked. And we were like, okay, let's do that option. Uh, But we deliberated for a while because it really did seem like an emergent situation where, you know, the vet was like, if it were my dog, I would probably do the, like, just check through surgery yeah. To be sure that it's not a blockage because the vet was very concerned. But like, you know, given her history of like having done kind of this before, yeah. We we didn't want to rush surgery. And the vet yeah. agreed, like, it is a totally valid plan to just give her the meds and the fluids and monitor. And if we need to do surgery, that would be tomorrow. Yeah. So we left Chloe there and we went back home. To yeah. clean up more. Because it was going to be like nine hours that they had her yeah. uh, on fluids and stuff. And they were like, just come back when we close. We went home, had a night full of worrying. Yeah. Uh, and then drove back there at midnight yeah. to pick her up. And when we got there, they were like, so we did the re-X-ray. Um, things like the pattern in her gut did change. So things are moving. Still nothing like definitive of, you know, these things that we're seeing are okay or not okay. Um, and she was feeling a little bit better, but then they were like, then she got kind of uncomfortable. So they gave her pain medicine and then she was like sleeping. Um, and they were like, and she's still leaking a bit of feces, you know, but now she's on these medicines. So they were like, take her home, give her this, you know, the medicine that we're taking home with her, which was an anti-nausea and anti-diarrheal and see how she feels in the morning. If you need to bring her back, bring her back when we open and we can do this all again or like transfer her or whatever. Uh, and if she's feeling better then you know, it was solved with medicine. So we bring her home. She's very loopy from the pain meds, butt's leaking. Uh, it was late, but we didn't get home till... 1 a.m. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she was, she did seem better. Yeah. Like, she was able to have a little food and mm-hmm. um, she went not afraid, like, no more huddling around, being afraid. Yeah. Uh, and so we had another very restless night of sleep. Yeah. She slept the <laughs> whole night, though. Like, she from did, two yeah. to when we woke up in the morning, which was like nine. She slept straight through. There was that one moment where she came in and got on the bed. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And she just, like, just wanted to cuddle. I'm about to have diarrhea all <laughs> over me. Uh, but no, she just wanted to cuddle. Yeah. Um, so the next morning, we got up and Chloe's doing better. Yeah. She had breakfast and kept it down. Um, she was still a little loopy. We took her outside and she almost <laughs> fell in the pool. Yeah. She was like not concerned about it either. We were like, what are you doing? Those but, pain meds took forever. But her spirit seemed way better. Yeah. Like, tail was now lagging yeah. for normal reasons. She was excited to eat. She was very excited to eat. And because of the tummy issues, she was getting noodles and chicken, chicken. Yeah. which is like, a delicacy to her. She she was very excited about that. Yeah. Um, And we've just been taking it kind of hour by hour and day by day. And she's been, I mean, now she's like back to normal. Yeah. Um, Things are pretty much resolved. Yep. But woof. Oh my God. For lack of a better word. Yeah. Woof. (laughs) That was a scary experience. It was terrifying. (laughs) We we genuinely were like, oh my God, is this, is this a, really dire situation yeah to go from like everything's great annoying person ticket yeah to like oh may have at home and yeah might need to do surgery like and looking up emergency vets twenty thousand dollars <laughs> yeah hey yeah 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 so that was our week but no that wasn't oh no week. there's more no. this morning it escaped me that something else happened this morning <laughs> no just so we think everything <laughs> Is getting back to normal. We're like, hey, we're going to get a really good night's sleep tonight because we spent the previous night at the hospital. This is a scary thing. You know, this is going to be our well-rested relaxation night. <laughs> and it <surprise>. wasn't. <laughs> it, it wasn't. 
Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you about the absolutely ridiculous situation <laughs> that occurred last night. Yep. There is no diarrhea involved. <laughs> Welcome back. It is finally our night of serenity. <laughs> We've been dealing with a lot, and we're just going to drift off to sleep. It's raining in Los Angeles again. again. <laughs> so there's a nice drizzle on the roof above us. Yeah, but there's like some strange sounds. I think this is pertinent information. <laughs> the rain coming off of the roof, it, it's been raining very hard here for a long time. Coming off of the roof hits like a metal. I think the gutters are metal. There's something that makes like kind of a metallic sound and there's like multiple of them. There's some like pots outside. I've learned to make peace with it. Yeah, no, I, it's not a bad sound. <laughs> it's just the rain is quite loud. Like yeah. there's just a lot of different sounds. And honestly, it's it's kind of nice to sleep with. But the sounds can change depending on how hard it's raining. And so that is important because at 5 a.m. I wake you up. We're bo- no, we both. I woke up before you said that. Really? Yeah, I was awake already. And, oh, I, wow. and I had decided in my head what the sound was. Interesting. And then you woke up and you were like, I hear voices. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. So <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, what in the world? I'm woken up by a sound. And in my half sleep, I'm like, okay, it must just be the gutter making some weird, like, deep murmuring, rever- like, reverberation. Uh, reverberation, yeah, rever- sounds. Reverberation. I know, I could barely say that. So I'm like, it, it, it sounds like the gutter to me. Like, my mind is making it sound like the gutter. I did not have the same experience. No, Shane woke up, like, 15 minutes later. And I hear voices. Yeah. I hear a full-on conversation like an energetic <laughs> yeah. conversation happening in what sounds like our living house. Room. Yeah. And I was like, so Shane said, I hear, do you hear those voices? I was panicked. Yeah. And I was like, Shane, Shane, <sighs> like I hear them, but it's not actually voices. It's the, it's the rain. And okay? I, I took that at, you know, at face value. <laughs> yeah. I, you like snuggled into me. I was like, all right, I'm just like sleepy. I, yeah. I don't know. But like, yeah, I, I, now I hear the rain, <laughs> and I remember it makes weird noises. Man, though, that <laughs> sounds like a a human being. And then it changed, <sighs> and it was um, it was a male voice, because until then it had only been like a female voice, and uh-huh. it really did sound like the rain. Then when it became a little bit louder and deeper, it was like, no, that is a man speaking. Like those are words that we are hearing. So I'm I'm not yet like refuting Hannah's rain idea until. We begin to hear like kind of laughter and like <laughs> yeah. back and forth. Yeah, now there are definitely like multiple voices <laughs> having a conversation. So we are like, oh, like what's happening? And I thought it was someone out in our yard yeah. or like right outside the window. There's like a little walkway, but our whole area is gated and like locked. And so I was really confused. You can't get in here unless you really want to. Yeah. Which made it scarier. Way scarier. <laughs> and it it's only been at this point like half an hour that we've laid there kind of at first we were thinking it was the rain. Then we were like half asleep. Yeah. I don't know what it is. And then at this point at five 30, I turned the light on and I'm like, okay, I need to find these people because I am, I started to get so panicky. I was like, Oh my God, there's actual people. Like, are they in the living room or are they outside our door? Like, what are they doing? And an extra layer of confusion for me was that our dog was not barking. Yeah. And like if anyone was talking, in our house or True. within earshot of our dog, she would be very yeah. like, get out of my house. Um, but that wasn't happening. So I was like, where's our dog? Yeah. Like, where are these <laughs> Did people? Did they take our dog? What's happening? So I hear, I'm still laying in bed. I hear Hannah like creeping over <laughs> to our bedroom door. Well, no, first I walked out into the living room. That's what I did, that door. Oh, to our yeah, bedroom. Yeah, oh, yeah, cause yeah. there's a, also a door to the outside right, right. in our bedroom. But you opened our, like, inside door. Yeah. And the noises did not get louder. No. So that was a good sign. And I, like, creep <sighs> out, and I'm, like, trying to see the TV. And I'm like, Shane, it's not out here. Like, it's coming from our bedroom, like, from behind me. So it's, I go back in. That sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> it's like, Shane, it's coming from above you. <laughs> it's in the room with us. And at this point, I'm like, oh, my God, they're outside our door. So the bedroom windows don't open. So I had to open the door, which was, like, terrifying 
But I open the bedroom door. It's getting louder and louder as I get closer. And, and I'm like, I'm about to meet these people. And this door is directly in front of my face. Yeah. So I'm laying there still snuggled in bed. But I'm like <laughs> sweating and like, oh, hey, that'd be careful. Yep. And <laughs> we're like, they're going to be right outside the store. We open the door and the noise hits. Like, it is so real loud. loud. Real, real loud Screaming. conversation. And we immediately realize this is a news show. <laughs> It are it's two anchors talking to each other, uh, like a female anchor and a male anchor telling a story of like some car accident or something. And there's like sound effects now, yeah, and music under story, yeah. yeah. So, so we cannot. <laughs> I don't think it's clear how loud this was. It was obviously an outdoor TV or radio, and it was so loud that like the walls of our bedroom were shaking a little bit. <laughs> it was unbelievably loud like no one was listening to this this was some sort and then i got really creeped out because i was like oh my god why would the tv be on this loud and then i was like shane what if someone is being murdered and this is like to cover it up you know like that's where my mind went i remember you saying that i said that we were both like wait that would be a silly yeah that draws attention that draws attention to it not repel it i made myself feel better but hannah did a little more spelunking yeah and found that our neighbor's like backyard sound system was on was on it was all lit up yeah full volume blaring this news broadcast yeah and very clearly like there was not anyone there because this was not something that you would want to be <laughs> listening to it wasn't like dance music or no it like worked out it was nothing and 5 a.m yeah i mean it was a 5 a.m news a bit strange yeah so <sighs> we try to go back to bed at this point we're like okay i guess it's fine um and it does not turn off ever. So at like eight, we open our bleary little eyes and we're like, oh my God, we did not sleep at all. Nope, I've been laying there, eyes wide open yeah. for three, four hours. The worst. And I was trying to trick myself into like, I'm a kid and my parents are like listening to the TV in the other room. It didn't sound like that. Some mental gymnastics. I really was. I, I literally tried to go back to pretending it was water <laughs> and I didn't do it. I, I was like, nope, that's a man. That's a man speaking. Yeah. So we wake up. We're waiting for this to turn off. We're like, surely now the neighbor will either awaken or like come home. Or Someone just, will call the police. Get like, tired of the news. <laughs> surely this will turn off. At around 12, it is still not off. It is full volume. The entire neighborhood, like you can hear it. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we don't want to call the police. This is not a police issue. Maybe our Airbnb host knows the neighbor and can like text them because they're not home. I like walked by the house to see if there was a car and they're not there. So I text the Airbnb owner and, you know, surprisingly or not surprisingly, she knows the person yeah. that lives there. And she's like, oh, yeah, I don't know if they're home, but I'll get in touch with them. Yeah. Long story short, it turns out that they have a, quote, wonky <laughs> TV system. Wasn't it kooky? <laughs> I want to, to yeah, it whatever kooky. it was, some kind of TV system that's on the fritz. Uh -huh. And this is like maybe not the first time this has happened. Yes. So they're sending an IT an person. IT person is on the way. The, yep. the broadcast is still happening. Yeah. <laughs> so if you need to catch the news, swing by our neighborhood uh, and just get out of your car and you'll hear it. Um, I but, think we're going to, if it's not off by tonight, we're sleeping in this room on the. <laughs> As far as possible that we can get away from there, I will you know? sleep and I will go to a hotel. Yeah. And that is still on tonight. Um, but uh, man, it's just like each one of these things by themselves is annoying and like, yeah. you know, a lot to handle. But all in a row. Yeah. Oh, man. And very clearly the Chloe one was the worst. <laughs> Because that was like distressing, oh, yeah. you know, that was the ho most horrible two days of not knowing what was happening. Exactly. You know, and then the ticket and this were just like minor annoyances, but we are just, we're tired. We're tired. Yep. What else is going to happen? I, I, this morning you said to me, I made like some dumb comment and you said, Shane, I do not have the patience for this. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't have a sense of humor today. I feel better now. The sun came out. That's good. Yeah. There's it was also still raining this morning, which didn't help. We yeah. were like, great. <laughs> More <laughs> rain. What a beautiful day <laughs> in Los Angeles. Let's go get a speeding ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Yeah. All right. Well, that has been our Mayhem Week. We hope your week hasn't been 
this may have me. Yeah, we'll be back next week with a more a uplifting f- podcast. A fun, bright episode. Yeah. With no diarrhea, no person tickets. Yep. Oh, hey, man. doesn't my mom get back next week? She comes she back. Does. Maybe we'll have her on the podcast. Aww, I, sh- I don't know that. what her flight gets in. That would be fun. But she comes back next week when we record this. So. All right, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, well, hopefully you didn't enjoy what happened to us. Yeah. But if you enjoyed our recounting of it, <laughs> please leave us five stars. Leave us a great review. Share it with all your friends. And? It is a joke out there. If you would like to visit, please know that we only have one accessible parking space. You are not allowed to back in. <laughs> Anyone that violates this law will be executed. <laughs> we take this rule very seriously here at Jet Red Mayhem. <laughs> Do not test us. Bye, everyone. <laughs>